Hey guys, welcome to the start of the RCA Color Roundy Restoration Project. Got this the same time as the GE Color Roundy set. This is a CTC 15 chassis. The GE is a clone of it, slight reworking. The main difference being the GE uses more compactron tubes because GE invented them. But otherwise, the chassis should look awfully similar to you if you watch those videos. There are some compactrons in this though. For example, the horizontal output tube and the damper tube. And this has a 6JE6 in it. I don't have the tube chart for this. It's not inside the cabinet. It's not on the back cover. So, um, I, this is not the same one that GE used. So, I don't know if that's a substitute or the original. Either way, it's pretty fried looking, at least on one side. And in general, it looks like this set saw more use. The tubes are a bit more discolored. Uh, I think it's just slightly older. And just like the GE, this one seems to have been tinkered with a little bit. When we took the cover off on the first video on this set, uh, we discovered the high voltage cover was off. It's there. Uh, it was lying to the side of it. So I suspect somebody at least went in here and tried poking around. I may have had the cover off for ventilation too. Uh, these flybacks tend to run hot. So I hear and you can see the wax has dripped down. Uh, at any rate, in this video what I'm going to do is the same thing we did for the GE or at least attempt to, which is a slow power up. So I pulled out the damper and the horizontal output tube. I turned the set on from the front. It's plugged into a Variac. We're going to turn this on and slowly ramp up the power. And I hope the caps reform. So what happened with the GE was just the tubes were lighting up. There was no B plus because the circuit breaker was faulty. So we'll see what happens with this guy. So we're starting out with zero. Let's go up to 10 volts. We have current drop. Excellent. So that means we have continuity. There's power going to something. I can't tell if it's B plus. Well, let's see if I push the circuit breaker. Ah, this one's flaky too. When I push it and let go, the current shot up, meaning that as it stood before I did that, only the filaments were getting current, I imagine. All right, cool. So what we're gonna do is like with the GE, let me turn the Variac up, and I can see the current draw is dropping a little bit. So I'll go like 10 volts every 5 minutes, or in, until this needle stabilizes. Leaky capacitors are drawing more current. As the electrolyte reforms, they build up resistance and the current draw drops. That's what we're observing on the meter here. So even while I've been talking, it's dropped probably a tenth of an amp. Which is good. It's a very good sign. I'm up to 60 volts now. Things have been progressing very nicely. Uh, the current drop has been dropping over time at each point. Uh, quite nicely and things are stabilizing and looking good Should start to see signs of life around 90 volts I got all the way up to full power with no problem so I popped back in the damper tube and horizontal output tube with my current cathode current monitoring gizmo let's give it a try drawing about an amp and a half let's go up One and three quarters. No current draw. What's the up to? Yeah, she doesn't even look like it's glowing.
There it goes. There it goes. I think we might have high voltage. Can kind of hear it. Turn about two and a quarter amps. Yeah, I'm sure we got high voltage. I can kind of feel it now. Current trial on this guy. 150. It's reasonable. This should be under uh, 220. Okay, uh, I'm going to turn the sex of it against the wall right now and see if there's anything on the screen. Unfortunately, we have absolutely nothing. Brightness control here. And from one extreme to the other, I mean, there is just nothing. Tuner's doing something, huh? Oh! Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ah, there might be some AGC action going on. In the absence of a signal, things get dimmer. Ooh, alrighty. Let's hook up the signal source. Okay. Huh, same problem as the GE. Not going down all the way. Common um, issue with bad electrolytics in the vertical circuit. Ooh. This looks very encouraging. I don't think there's any horizontal hold on the front. Oh, yeah, let's see. I thought there were some extra controls hidden somewhere in the front of this. Oh, yeah, they're down here. Oh, I think that's where it's on a hold and I just can't quite get there. Or no, maybe this is. Oh, this is vertical. Oh, looky there. No sound. Dim too. So there's brightness. Oh, there we go. Brightness. This is tint. Color. Oh, fine tuning. It doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. Hey, check it out. Just like with the GE, if I adjust the fine tuning, so I'm right at the edge of losing it, I get sound and I get color. It's a little bit more and we lose it, but if I just back off a bit, there we go. Everything's off a bit because I'm just playing around with it, but yeah. Not bad. What's wrong with you? Played around with the contrast and color and tint and, and so on and got things looking even better. No choice, you call a play. But uh, with the vertical height control on the back, this is as good as I can get it. So we definitely have some work to do on it. I'll pull the tubes, test the tubes. Could just be a weak vertical output tube. Uh, or pull a chassis and investigate from there, but what a fantastic first power-up. Even better than the GE.
Sally Hodges. I thought you might like to see it. Well, that was a pleasant surprise. This set actually works fairly well. If it wasn't for that cataract and vertical height issue, it could be watched pretty much as is. So next up, I'm going to pull the tubes and test them, and I guess I'll pull the chassis. I'd really feel more comfortable if I could at least take a look underneath and see what's going on, make sure that... There isn't a, like, like in the GE, I found a connection that wasn't soldered, for example. You know, just check for stuff like that. Forgy looks like this tuner is also hardwired right to the chassis, but there's no UHF. So I don't think it's too hard to get it. It looks like maybe three screws. I'm going to pull the knobs. Speakers, those unplug. Uh, convergence board, yeah, that unplugs and the yoke and stuff. Well, yeah, it's very, very similar to how the GE is set up, so I'm on pretty familiar territory there. That's going to be it for now. In the next installment, we'll have this chassis up on the workbench and we'll give it a look over. Thanks for watching.